Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. Good morning and welcome to this online worship service from the sanctuary at Friends Congregational Church. We are so glad that you have joined us today for this worship experience. We wanna welcome everyone, especially those who may be visiting with us today. If you'd like to get to know us a little better, you can fill out an online visitor card that you'll find on our website and a link will be on the screen so that we can get to know you a little better and you can learn a little more about our congregation. We wanna encourage you to participate fully in this service to download the worship guide, which will be found in the Facebook or YouTube post or on our website to follow along with the service, to join us in singing, in the responses and in the prayers. Let us know that you're here in the comments section and share this virtual sacred space together. I also want to encourage you to download, if you haven't already, our new quarterly newsletter that you'll find on our website, The Epistle. We have a beautiful new format for this newsletter and want to encourage you to download that, to share it, and if you'd like to receive a hard copy of that in the mail, please let the office know. Again, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on your journey, you are welcome and we are glad that you're here. Welcome to worship. Please join us in the call to worship that you'll find in the worship guide for today's service. Let us come together rejoicing, for nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not prejudice nor power. Not the wrongs we have done, nor the wrongs done against us. When nothing feels certain, this truth remains. Let every heart be lifted. The, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God is so close. close.
as we journey through valleys of death and over mountains of injustice your truth is our sustenance and your presence our comfort though the struggles make us weary keep us determined in love we are here O oh god to grow and be transformed may it be so among us amen Good morning. I'm Kathleen Witte Minky. And I'm Josh Ninky. And we want to welcome you to Friends Congregational Church online worship service. How cool is this? We're an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. And in the word of the UCC, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So I started coming to Friends about three years ago, and it all came at a time in my life when I had pretty much given up on religion, and I was sure that I didn't need any of that in my life. Um, but I just had a little tug after I learned about Friends, and I decided to heed it. And I came to Friends, and it was the Mother's Day service, and I just bawled. I just bawled the whole time. and. I think that was about as much of a sign that I needed that I was missing something and it was probably Friends Church. So I've been coming ever since. And then... And then when uh, we started dating two years ago, I started coming pretty regularly as well and have just thoroughly enjoyed my time at Friends, getting to meet and know everybody. Uh, it's, it's been very different from my more traditional background, <laughs> but it has been uh, a blessing in every sense of the word. So at this time, we would like to invite our children to get very close to their screens for the children's message. You can use your human kids too. <laughs> Can you see me? I don't think you can see me. Where I am, it's really dark. You know, I used to be scared of the dark. We had a basement in a lot of our houses growing up. I know that's kind of weird here in Texas, but some places where the property isn't so close to the water table, <laughs> um, there are basements with stairs that go down into the darkness. and. I would have to turn off the light at the base of the stairs and then I would have to, I, I felt like I always had to run up the stairs really, really quick because there was something that was down in the darkness that was going to get me. But you know, I don't have to be as scared of the darkness anymore. It can still be scary. You know, really it's not knowing what's in the darkness that's scary. 
um, the fear of the unknown, the fear of what happens if. Have you ever felt that way before? Have you ever felt scared in the dark where your mind is creating all of these imaginary creatures that might hurt you or that might get you? Maybe you create bad situations in your head where you're walking down the street and you start thinking about, well, what if I trip and fall or what if I get hit by a car? And all of the the what ifs, the things that happen in our minds first before they happen in real life, those can be really, really scary. You know, in today's Bible story, there's a man who's really scared of the what ifs. It's someone that the the Bible tells us was filled with with demons, although we don't know what that means necessarily. Um, You know, whether those were actual, you know, evil creatures or spirits inside of him, or whether he was struggling with an illness or maybe even a mental illness. But whatever it was, when he met Jesus, he was really afraid of what would happen when what he knew was gone. If Jesus came and and healed him, what would his life be like? You know, it's kind of like when you're in the dark, but you're too afraid to turn on the light at the or turn off the light or turn, yeah, turn on the light at the base of the stairs because you don't know what's going to come and get you when you do. It's almost like you'd rather stay in the dark sometimes. You know, yeah, it's scary, but turning on the light is even scarier because you don't know what's going to be there. You know, Jesus is someone that lets us know that we don't have to be afraid of what's there when we turn on the light. That the things that happen when we let ourselves be healed, when we give up our fears and our uncertainties, Jesus is there to say, hey, I'm going to stand right next to you. We're going to turn on the light together. Whether that's an actual light at the base of the stairs or whether that's, you know, a light that means like our, our happiness. We don't want to know what it's going to be like if we're happy or hopeful in a time like this when so much in the world is uncertain. Jesus is there and he is ready to turn on the light with us. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for loving us and for sending Jesus to stand with us as we turn on the light in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. of Christ is that wherever we are, his peace will be with us. And so today, know that Christ's peace is with you wherever you are, whatever you're feeling or experiencing, you are loved and surrounded. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Please share a sign of that peace with those physically around you, with those in the comment section virtually, and know together that we are embracing and sharing this peace.
Here are some of the things going on this week at Friends Church. Friends and our neighbor Peace Lutheran are working together to distribute food from the Brazos Valley Food Bank every Friday this summer. If you'd like to help out and share an hour or more of your time between 3 and 7 p.m., let Ann Worley know. Come to the Peace Lutheran parking lot where the distribution is happening, wear your mask, and prepare to meet some great people. Hope to see you there. Speak Up, Stand Up, and Show Up signs are available. The Justice and Mission Committee has ordered these yard signs for sale to the congregation. The cost is $12, stake included. We have five left to sell, so please contact Linda Coates if you would like to purchase one. We also want to thank you for your generous donations to the Back Bay Mission Hygiene Kit Assembly Project. We are preparing to assemble the kits. The initial date for that assembly has been postponed, but stay tuned for a rescheduled time. The Social Justice Sunday School class invites you to join them for Sunday School on Zoom at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And they'd also like to thank you for your support of our local community, to all the generous donors who help make the diaper and mask drive for members of Santa Teresa Church a big success. Friends Church donated 1,247 diapers, 335 masks, and 240 wipes to our fellow neighbors. Thank you. The Morning Manna class also invites you to join them for Sunday School for a Bible study at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings on Zoom. And contact Pastor Trent for more information. Also, don't forget to join us for our noonday prayer and check-in times on Monday and Friday on Zoom or for our Wednesday evening prayer and communion time at 6.30 p.m. All are welcome. And please see your worship guide for more details about these and other announcements. The Epistle Scripture reading for today comes from Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you can be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Oh, no. 
gospel today is from Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Hear now this word. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. When Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. 
night and day among the tombs, and on the mountains he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind. The very man who had the legion. And they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy God has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. This is the word of God for the people of God. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle within us the fire of your love. And may my words and all of our hearts together glorify you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Most of us like a good scare every now and then. I've never been a big fan of horror movies, but there's no doubt that they're very popular. Many of us enjoy being scared sometimes, watching something frightening on the movie screen, or taking a roller coaster and feeling that sense of fear and anticipation as the car crests the top of the curve and prepares to plunge downward, feeling like it's out of control. I'm no psychologist, but I imagine we enjoy these things in part because they keep what's scary and frightening contained and safe. We can enjoy the frights of a horror film knowing that it's contained to the screen and ends when everything fades to black. And much of the evil, the fearful, the scary that we see on TV or the movie screen is cartoonish and over the top, exaggerated and unreal. We don't really think that a ghost will show up to haunt us or that a demon will appear and possess us or someone we love. We're modern, scientifically minded people. So when we, we read something like today's gospel story, it can be hard to know just what to do with it. Demonic possession is something from the movies. Twelve-year-old Reagan with her head spinning around, spitting out pea soup in The Exorcist. It's Hollywood, but it's not really real. But the gospel writer insists that the demonic is real. It's something that Jesus has to confront to bring about the kingdom of God. Demons seem to be all over the place in the Gospel of Mark. What's a modern person to do with that? I love the film The Exorcist, but when I think of the demonic powers of possession, I think of another classic film of the 1970s, one that's far more subtle in its portrayal of evil. I'm convinced that One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest has a far more powerful message about the nature of evil and how it can take control of a life. The film tells the story of Randall Patrick McMurphy, a repeat criminal offender who manages to get himself transferred to a mental institution by faking insanity so that he can avoid hard labor and serve out his sentence in what he believes will be ease. When Randall arrives in his ward, he's introduced to the woman in charge, Nurse Ratched. 
She's an outwardly calm presence, but soon he discovers that Nurse Ratched is an unyielding and domineering presence. Her tyrannical rule keeps the patients in line, but Randall's presence begins to stir things up as he rebels against the institutional conformity and the enforced submission of the ward. Ultimately, Randall comes to realize that most of the patients are there by choice and are not really insane so much as fearful of living out in the world. Most of them could leave at any time but have allowed themselves to be controlled into submission by Nurse Ratched and the institution. They've lost their very identities and their sense of self. They've lost their individuality and given up control of their very souls to the rules and regulations of the institution. In a sense, they are possessed. And Randall is determined to exercise the spirit of that place to try to free his fellow inmates from the control of the powers that would seek to strip them of their humanity. The truth is, possession can take many forms. The reality of our world is that evil is not confined to flashy and dramatic special effects. Jesus certainly knew this, and in the Gospel of Mark, we can find him confronting and defeating evil at almost every turn. When Jesus goes around healing people, he's not just restoring physical health. He's confronting the very realm of evil that is opposed to God's rule and reign. And the spirits know exactly who he is. What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Do not torment me. Ironically, when no one else around him, even his own disciples, don't get it or recognize fully who he is, the spirits know. They know that Jesus represents the presence of God's promised kingdom. They know that the presence of Jesus means liberation for all of creation, liberation from suffering and torment and the power of evil. And liberation is exactly what's happening here. Liberation from torment and from isolation, from rejection and from loss of self. The possessed man lives among the tombs, among death and the smell of rotting flesh. He lives far outside the safety and the security of the community, far away from interaction with others. He lives a life of total isolation and despair, literally walking among the dead. We're told that he's not in his right mind, and even the restraints that the people from the community use to bind him do not work. He always manages to break free. What's more, he's a danger not only to himself, but to others. He howls and bruises himself with stones. This is a man who has literally become inhuman. He lives like an animal. He's cut off from all connection with others. He is, as one theologian writes, the very image of self-destructiveness and social isolation. He has indeed been taken over by destructive powers. But there's something else going on here as well, another level of meaning that would have been unmistakable to Mark's first readers. Jesus and his followers have just crossed the Sea of Galilee, leaving behind their home region and entering the country of the Gerasenes. This was Gentile territory, outside the boundaries of the people of Israel. It's an alien place, and when Jesus asks the man his name, the demon answers, my name is Legion, for we are many. This was not a statement of quantity, not a declaration that there were a bunch of demons present. It was a name filled with unmistakable political overtones. Legion was a military term, a term used by Rome to describe a unit of 6,000 soldiers. In Jesus' day, the land of Palestine, and in fact, the entire known Gentile world was occupied and controlled by Rome. Rome possessed the world. The Holy Land, the place of refuge for God's chosen people, 
land that was intended to be a light to the nations, a representation of God's kingdom, was possessed with demonic powers, occupied by the power of Rome and all that it represented, idolatry and greed, violence and injustice. Jesus is confronting not just an individual possessed by an evil force, but an entire system of domination. In fact, it's precisely that power, that system of oppression and justice that can take over individual lives and drive them out into the place of death and despair. It's the powers that can possess us, drive us mad, push us out into isolation and self-destruction. But in Jesus, God brings a word of liberation that expels everything that would hold us back from experiencing the fullness of abundant life. In Jesus, the powers of fear and destruction, of exploitation and greed, of self-hatred and isolation are cast out. And the good news today is that exorcism, this liberation, is not only something for Jesus long ago, not only something for the movies. It's not reduced to special effects and holy water and the right incantations. You and I are called and empowered to liberate one another and our world of everything that would restrain God's people from life and liberation. We are called to exercise everything that represents the kingdoms of death and destruction in the name of Jesus Christ, the bearer of life and of love. Exorcism isn't just happening in the movies. It's happening right now among God's people. Exorcism is happening on the grounds of an abandoned and decaying prison in rural North Carolina, a place being transformed into a farm called Growing Change. The former Scotland Correctional Center, still surrounded with fences topped with razor wire, is being transformed into a farming and education center, growing sustainable food and teaching young people from troubled homes and backgrounds skills and giving them hope in the process. Instead of shuffling them into the juvenile correctional system, setting them up for a lifetime of prison and criminality, the founders of the farm want to offer an alternative, a place that can grow life physically and spiritually. A news article about the farm relates that the current participants are keeping bees, grazing a herd of sheep they will use for wool and meat, caring for a flock of hens, composting food waste, tending a garden with organic methods, and managing vermiculture. Down the road, they hope to create aquaponic tanks and cultivate mushrooms in former prison cells, introduce a certified community kitchen in the galley, a prison history museum in the barracks, and a climbing wall up the guard tower. A central focus of their efforts is giving back to their community. During the first few years, participants tended a garden and distributed free boxes of produce and flowers to their food insecure neighbors. And when the pandemic hit in March, the youth partnered with various agencies to distribute boxes of food to people in need. They planted a new garden on the former prison softball field that they will harvest in late summer and donate. On the grounds of a place where injustice and captivity reigned, those spirits are being cast out and life is being cultivated. That kind of thing is happening in our lives as well. When we tell someone that they are loved and valued and needed, when we care for each other and practice inclusion and compassion, when some people had only known exclusion and hate, when we make God's love real and tangible for someone that might never have heard before, that they are loved and valued. In all those kinds of places, when we practice the love of Jesus, we are casting out the demons of fear and injustice, and we are bringing God's light and love and liberation into the world. And God is with us always. 
even when we feel stuck in the shadows and pain. It's in those places of shadows and fear, the places where we don't want to go. The demons we're reluctant to face head on, the imperfections we see reflected back at us in the mirror, even there, especially there, God is present. Even when fear overtakes us, even when illness or despair or brokenness seem to possess us, even then, God is present. Present to speak a word of healing, present to remind us of unending love, present in the faces of those around us who can help us and care for us and love us even when we are unlovable. God is there. God is here. As my favorite contemporary affirmation of faith, the new creed from the United Church of Canada puts it, we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. In a moment, we will receive the offering. While we can't physically pass an offering plate, we can still share our gifts. A link to give online will appear on your screen in a moment. In community, we are buoyed by love. We are made capable of doing hard things, taking risks, and bravely facing the circumstances that surround us. With gratitude for this place of belonging and for God's presence with us, let us bring what we have together.
Please join in the prayer of dedication that you'll find in the worship guide. Let us pray. Courageous one, nurture in us the seeds of faith you have planted. We believe in the transformative power of love. We believe in each other. We believe in your creative presence in the world around us. But God, we struggle to live our beliefs. As we bring together our resources, we pray for your blessing upon our shared labor. May all that we do reflect the radical and abundant faith to which you have called us. Amen. 
want to invite us now into a time of prayer together when we can share all of the things that are on our hearts and minds, whether they are joyful or concerning, whatever it is that you are bringing with you into this sacred virtual space today, please share that. Share that in the comments section, and together we will hold all of our prayers before God. We will share again today a musical Prayers of the People. So allow this song to guide you and to lead you into this time of prayer as we share our prayers together. Let us pray. pray together in the words that Jesus taught us in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Please join in our closing hymn that you'll find printed in your worship guide, Lead Us from Death to Life. our worship has ended, but now our service begins. As we go forth from this place, know that you are the body of Christ and the whole world is waiting for you. So live passionately and love faithfully and celebrate every moment of your life from now until the finale, knowing that our God of compassion, of love, and of justice is with you, is holding you, is surrounding you each and every day. Amen. Amen.